2005 question three, three response, AP Calc. And it's got a table. It says distance and temperature. It says a metal wire of eight centimeters is heated on one end. The table above gives the values of temperature, T sub X and degrees Celsius, of the wire X centimeters from the heated end. So at the heated end, it's 100 degrees, and at the other end, it's 55 degrees Celsius. And it decreases as the length of this, which makes sense in a real situation. Function is decreasing and twice differential, right? Meaning the first derivative and the second derivative exists. Estimate t prime of 7. Show work that leads to the answer. Indicate units of measure. All right. If we're going to estimate the rate of change at 7 centimeters, the best we can do when we have a table is to do the average rate of change. So I'll just use 8 and 6. All right. So it's 55 minus 6 and 2 over 2, negative 7 halves degrees Celsius per centimeter. Again, units are critical. Point for the answer. My guess is as we go down the page, Units are going to be worth, but let's just go to the bottom of the line. Units at A, B, C will be worth a point if you get all three. So right now you don't get a third of a point. You got to get them all. So here's you got to have units. If you miss units, you got to for one. If you got these so far, so good. Write integral expression in terms of T sub X for the average temperature of the wire. Estimate the average temperature of the wire using a trapezoidal sum with four subintervals. Okay. Indicated by the data table. Indicated units of measure. All right. So this one is probably the harder one. Okay. First of all, you have to catch that you're asked to have an average temperature. This is of the format. Okay. Hey, if we're going to have an average, we're going to have to do this. And I suppose this time it's not f of t. It's t of x dx. All right, because it's an average, they're asking for the average temperature of the wire. So we're going to have to integrate it for the length and divide by the distance, okay? With that thought process in mind, we're going to work down the page a little bit. And actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this page off over to B, up to B, so we can see it at the same time. All right? So 1 over H, which is 8 minus 0, do you agree? From 0 to 8, T of X, B of X. That's a, that's the integral. That's worth a point. I mean, how quick and easy is that? Now, a trapezoid sum, all right? Remember our rules for a trapezoid. A trapezoid is base 1 plus base 2 divided by 2 times the height. Base 1 plus base 2, the height of the first trapezoid is 1. So here's the basis added. There's the height. I'll do it in green or blue. Base 1 plus base 2, 1793 here. Divide by 2. And the height this time is 4. The next one I can underline in green. 70 and 62. The height is 1. The last one we had was doing red again, 1655. The height is 2. And that's right here. That's what you have to show. You have to have that trapezoidal sum shown. All right. And you can make the argument that this looks like midpoint. Yeah, it does. All right. But this is the trapezoidal sum. Yeah, we did these. All right. So then you just do the math. And since this is calculator, this is not a hard thing to do. If you sum them up, I'm going to erase the lines. Four decimal places, you should have got 75.6875 degrees Celsius. So even if you screwed this up, some number you should you should have gotten to as a yes should have degree C. All right. So as long as you just and you can't just write degree C. If you left this blank and it wrote degree C, you're not going to get the unit credit. All right. You should still do it. I mean, if you're completely buttoned on the AP, write degree C. I mean, I seen you know I don't you don't see. It's for, the few scorings I've seen have been strange. All right, so let's go to C. Then here's the D. Okay. I'm just going to cover D. Fine. From zero to eight, T prime x dx, and indicate units of measure. Explain the meaning of the integral from zero to eight of T prime of x dx in terms of temperature of the wire. All right. We're going to integrate. All right. 
t prime from zero to eight. The integral of t prime is simply we'll skip, they even skip this step. They don't show it. It's going to be t sub x from zero to eight. Okay, three. And then that shows t of eight minus t of zero. Okay. All right. So we, that's the answer. We take the last answer, which is fifty-five, up from the table, and I'm going to the table here. Raise those numbers at the top, and you don't need those. You just pick this and this, right? Because that's the values you need. Take those down, and you do the math. Get negative 45 degrees. And what's that mean? Temperature drops 45 degrees from the heated end of the wire to the other end of the wire. That's what it is. Right? And think about it. It's the rate of change. What's T prime? It's the rate of change of the temperature over the length of the wire. That's what it is. All right? Because what are the units on? T prime, degrees Celsius per centimeter, zero to centimeters, it had to be degrees C. So again, at this point, if you've had this unit, degrees Celsius and degrees Celsius, give yourself a point. All right, units A, B, C. All right. So here we are, we're four, five, six, seven because of the units. So A, B, C have covered seven to nine points. Now we're stuck. Now we have letter D. We're stuck on letter D. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to send, take one second, I'm going to send this to the back so we can pull it all the way up. Now I should be able to pull this up so D is right under. And it should be this all in the same page. All right. So again, we're on letter D now. Here's our table. Are the data in the table consistent with the assertion that T prime prime, that's a double derivative, it's kind of hard to read on the board, that T prime prime is greater than zero for every x in the interval from zero to eight. Explain your answer. Alright. Listen, you have to do some average rates of return, okay? And what they did here is they did from one to five, alright, and they found that, that was negative, they did the average rate of return from 5 to 6, and found that was negative. And remember, in letter A, what did we know? That's the uh, average rate of change minus .5. It's negative also, alright? So, they show the two, so they're going to give a point, two, two slopes of secret lines, alright? And then they're going to have this explanation. Are the data table consistent with the assertion that T prime prime is always greater than zero? Or that it's concave off everywhere, okay? And the answer here is no. By mean value theorem, T prime of C1 equals negative 5.75 for some C1 in the interval 1 to 5, okay? And T prime C2 for some C2 between 5 and 6. It follows that T prime must decrease somewhere between C1 and C2. Therefore, T prime prime is not positive for every number. They show, all right, it through the mean value. Theory. I would argue this is a very tough letter G. When we talk about problems where you might not try to get all the three out, where we're fighting the clock, I mean, this separates four from five. I mean, it's in my opinion. Now, again, I put this on the internet, and someone will argue with me. So be it. That's their right. When we talk about what we want to do to get our form, this is the next question. But this should make sense. Okay. Yeah. 